Star Spangled Banner. that uh, Norm uh, was here. The band members, you're probably going to be the only ones here 50 years from now. Hey. <laughs> if you want, the rest of us are going to be out of town, I think. Out of town. <laughs> anyway, welcome to all of you, and uh, this is great. This is a great crowd. Really appreciate you coming out on this beautiful, sunshiny, typical Whitehall day. We are uh, celebrating the um, capsule being implanted today. I think it's a very, very special occasion and things are falling down. <laughs> this is a very significant thing, the capsule, because it's got all our memorabilia, some very important facts of what our life was like now. And what I'm really excited about is that I don't have to say sesquicentennial anymore. <laughs> Can't you just see bicentennial is so much easier? Yeah. There's a, um, this is a slight commercial break right now. Inside we have all kinds of merchandise. And uh, I thought you'd like to take a look at them. And you really ought to have uh, a memory of this important day. And what I'd like to do is really thank the people that uh, have put a couple of years of effort into this. Those people are Deb Hayes, and she really headed up the capsule e effort. <laughs> Essie, thank you so much. You did so much. <laughs> Ellie Dennis, Tom Lusk, Ed Whalen, my friend Norm Allman, Sandy Gibbs, Sandy Sandell, and last but not least, Amy Van Leeuwen. Give them all a great hand. There's one other member that is rather important, and that's the chair, and that's Tanya Kabbalah. She has really done an outstanding job. She was so dedicated to this and really made it a fun-filled year. And I'd like her to come forward and give us a few words about the significance of this capsule. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Can you hear okay? Okay, this will be hard. I have to read my notes and speak into the mic too. Anyway, thank you very much um, for showing up today, um, especially since the sesquicent sesquicentennial. <sighs> sesquicentennial is done, has been done for kind of a while. Uh, but really want to thank Deb. Deb, um, on every member of the committee worked hard and contributed, you know, uh, for specific things and, and kept us all together. In particular, Deb was very, very interested in, in having a time capsule. Spent hours researching it, um, looking at you know what the time capsule should look like, um, you know all the aspects of it. It's registered. I mean, she's going to tell you a little bit more about it, but just a fabulous job. And you know, we, we may not think that that's so important right now. We're just going to put this in and, and brick it up. But I think um, 
it's really going to be important when people open it up, and I think they're really going to appreciate the effort that went into it. Um, she pulled a wonderful mix of, of items for our future residents to take a look at. We're basically sharing our history with our future community. Um, and, and to me, you know, going through the sesquicentennial and planning for the time cap, so it makes me think um, that we really need to always recommit ourselves to our city, make it the best it can be for, for those who live here, um, visit, and, and hope others will do the same. And so this, this is really a gift to our future community, and, it, and that makes it really exciting. Just want to go over, just to remind folks that we, our sesquicentennial, our 150th anniversary was last year. We were very pleased to be able to offer at least one event every month. Um, we relied heavily on community volunteers and assets. For example, we, we basically signed up people from the community to do educational presentations and programs. I um, want to thank all these people, so kind of bear with me, but you'll, you'll see that we had quite a few people involved. We had presentations by John McGarry now, uh, from the Lakeshore Museum Center, Norm Allman, Roger Sharmer. Becky Nordland, the Muskegon County Genealogical Society, the White Lake Area Historical Society. There was a Lumbering History Weekend by the White Lake Community Library. We had um, a style show at Picado's, a movie of the Centennial at the Playhouse. Our kickoff was at Julie Ostrander's Historical House. We had fireworks and a Pickens. Uh, picnic sponsored by the Beacon and Harbor Light Credit Union. We had a historical calendar, and there are a few left in there, but you might have to be kind of speedy. Um, and another effort um, led by um, Deb Hayes. Oscar Osbo did a, a video um, documenting our city, and that's in the time capsule. Um, Dexter King, the Monty Museum, Norm Allman, Chris Mallory, and her students provided pictures for the calendar. Al Alcoa Halmet provided funding for the banners. George Byam uh, made us medallions and lapel pins. Stephen Caroline May Mayberry did a fundraiser for us. Um, Sharon McCullough and Beryl Gable from the Lakeshore Museum Center helped Deb Hayes um, order materials and, and uh, box up the time capsule. Um, Jerry Grady put on a tannery photo display for us. The Nuveen Center uh, did a walk-through time for students. Sandra Cross led up a community band. Uh, Eleanor and Chuck Svensson were our, our um, sesquicentennial parade king and queen. Uh, plus, people donated, people came to meetings, people came to the events. Um, and then Brian Hesse and Nate Hesse um, made the time capsule on their own time with their own materials. Nick Hesse from White Howl Products donated, and his company donated the plaque. Uh, Dean Evans um, made the brickwork, and of course we had the wonderful band. So, you know, thanks for your patience and listening to that, but you can see that this was quite a community effort, and we are very pleased to, to have all that support. Um, I'm very happy to um, let Deb Hayes take over, who um, is responsible for the time capsule, and, and I hope you can give her a good hand. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya, and thanks everyone again for coming. This poster behind me gives you some indication of some of the items that we put into the time capsule. And there was some real thinking behind what went in there. First, we knew we had to have a historical theme going in there. Obviously, the sesquicentennial is all about that. Uh, our local author, Dan Yakes, we have three of his books in there. The one about, it's called Looking Aft, and that's about the White Lake tourism industry and the history of the Yacht Club. His Logging the White is all about our lumbering heritage, and his brand new book is on Sylvan Beach, and that's in there as well. I have not yet read that one. We also have the calendar in there, which has a lot of historical key landmark dates for Whitehall, and a lot of DVDs, as Tanya already covered. Uh, next, we wanted to share with future residents how we did celebrate our 150th birthday. So everything sesquicentennial is in there. All the apparel, which, boy, you're invited after this to go in, and we're almost giving that stuff away, so we encourage you to go in there and get a memento of that. Um, we have a schedule of sesquicentennial events. We have a binder with nearly 70 press clippings that both the Chronicle and the Beacon gave us great press through the whole year. So we've had that all reproduced on acid-free paper and bound so the future can see 
all the publicity that we did get. We also have DVDs in there on um, Lumbering, a tour of the Lighthouse Museum, a history of Whitehall schools, Whitehall in the railroads, and more. Well, how are you going to play a DVD 50 years from now? We put in a DVD player and instructions. <laughs> that, uh, that technology will be extinct. And finally, we wanted to give future residents a snapshot of Whitehall in 2010. So how did we do that? We have an album in there with about 170 photos of businesses, landmarks, churches, the marinas, the cemetery, the bike trail. You name it, it's in there. So I think it will be really fun for those folks to page through the album and see the way things looked now in our time. Also, we put in there a, a 2010 Whitehall High School yearbook and the Howell Met Theater schedule, and Amy provided lots of great promotional material from the chamber, so that gives people a real good snapshot of life in, in Whitehall today. The committee had help in preserving these items. Um, as Tanya man, uh, mentioned, Lakeshore Museum Center, the registrar, Sharon McCuller, is here. Sharon? Okay, she's over here. And the archivist, uh, Beryl Gable, came out here twice and wrapped every single item in acid-free tissue paper, labeled everything with acid-free pen, and boxed it all up in special storage boxes. So everything's not jumbled in there. It's all very organized in, in boxes. And everything had to be done like that to prevent deterioration over time. So we couldn't have done it without their help. They were great. Thank you. And I think it's safe to say that probably most of us won't be around when the capsule is scheduled to be opened in 2060 for Whitehall's Bicentennial. Well, that's where the International Society of Time Capsules come in. This is an organization operating out of Oglethorpe University in Atlanta. They're building a database of time capsules worldwide, and they estimate there's about 10,000 of them, and most of them are lost. Well, we're not going to be. We had to fill out a very detailed questionnaire about every item that's in here, uh, how it's to be opened, where exactly it's stored, when it's to be opened. So it's a sort of a tickler system. So in, in 50 years, they will notify who's ever in charge and let them know that uh, this time capsule is due to be opened. Even though we're going to see it every day, people won't remember. They'll forget. Um, it's our hope that Whitehall folks of 2060 will enjoy and appreciate what has been preserved for them and that they'll continue to preserve this and more for, for future generations to come. So thank you very much. And now Tanya and Mac are going to come back and... Oh, she's got a hand on. We knew that already. If you'd like to wait a minute, uh, they are going to pull up and uh, actually put the uh, lid on the capsule and then uh, put some mortar or over it. Uh, if you're getting chilly and you'd like to go inside for re refreshments, you're more than welcome. We wanted, uh, we wanted you students from the high school to be here because uh, maybe some of you will be here 50 years from now and you can say, I was there when they put that thing in because 50 years ago, and maybe you'll look, this is what you'll look like 50 years from now, uh, but uh, 50 years ago, uh, the high school principal, wonderful man, Les Fawner, uh, hired me and another student to stand on the corner of Colby and Mears and pass out flyers for the centennial, the month of April, May, and June, and also to put bumper stickers on people's cars if they wanted them. That was, remember those old paper bumper stickers that would never come off? That's what we put on people's cars. So maybe you kids will be around. If you are, you can come and say, I was there when they planted this thing. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Norm. You're never at a loss for words. That's right. <laughs> There's one on the yeah. <laughs>
Thank <laughs> you. 